Are you having ongoing elevated B12 levels and wondering what tests you can do or what you can do to figure out what's going on in your body? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at this newer type of test called B12 binding capacity, how it fits into elevated B12 levels, what it means, what a high result, a normal result is to help you understand what's going on with high B12 levels in your blood tests. And we even got some models. Again, my name is Dr. Taranel. I just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, diagnosis, or symptom. I'm making these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, lab tests, hormones, everything related to health, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at tests for high vitamin B12 levels. A lot of people want to know what is causing their high B12 levels on their blood test results. They also want to know what they should do about this elevated B12 level. So for most people, the answer is going to be really you just need to retest when you've been away or haven't been taking the B12 or any kind of supplement that might have B12 in it for a period of time, could be three weeks, even three months, just to verify that there's nothing else causing the elevation in the B12. It really depends how high the B12 level is. Now, for those people with persistently elevated B12 levels or other circumstances where you really just want to know what could be going on with this elevation in your B12 levels, there is a fairly newer test that may help clarify what's going on in terms of is the B12 getting trapped and not able to get into the cell or what else could be going on with your elevated B12 levels. This test might provide some additional context and give you a deeper understanding of what's actually going on. So we're going to talk in detail about this test, which is called B12 binding capacity. So I do go into some detail on elevated B12 levels in my book, Don't Be Deficient. While the book is focused on not being deficient, sometimes people with high B12 levels are going to be deficient in B12, as paradoxical as that may sound. So if you want more information on elevated B12 levels and support this channel, check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. So now back to our story on elevated B12 levels in your blood test. So the test is called B12 binding capacity, and it's measuring the amount of transcobalamin molecules in any given sample. If you have a lot of transcobalamin, you're going to have a lot of binding capacity, typically speaking, but not always. Transcobalamin is one of the binding proteins for B12. It helps transport it throughout the blood and it binds up B12 that's floating around in our blood. So the test is measuring the capacity of your body to bind B12. And so in that sense, it's measuring the unbound or free transcobalamin molecules floating around in your blood. The bound versions will be bound to B12. So while your B12 levels may be elevated, you may also have a high unsaturated transcobalamin level or a high B12 binding capacity. So what does it mean if it's high in the context of elevated B12 levels? Well, if you have really high B12 levels and you have a really high binding capacity, it means that a lot of the B12 is not bound up. And from that, I would conclude that you have a lot of transcobalamin molecules floating around in your blood. The B12 is automatically going to bind to transcobalamin in your body. So if you have high B12 level and there's a lot of binding capacity, it just means the overall level of those transcobalamins are probably higher than the B12. Some of it for sure is going to be bound up. Actually, a lot of it probably will be, but because there's so much more binding capacity than there are B12 molecules, the test typically would be normal or low if you have elevated B12 levels because there's not a lot of binding capacity left because there's so much B12 available. So in the case that you have high B12 levels and your B12 binding capacity is low or normal, it just means you're probably getting too much B12 in your diet. If your B12 binding capacity is elevated and you have high B12 levels, that means you're probably making more transcobalamin molecules than you otherwise should be or would be. 
And this can happen from increased production of certain types of white blood cells. Yes, it can be cancer, but it can also be from other inflammatory things, including infection, because there's a lot of nuance to figuring this sort of thing out and you don't want to overreact or underreact. It's good to look at these test results in conjunction with your doctor. This video certainly isn't comprehensive on all the things that can be going on in the body. So make sure you check with your doctor before you make any decisions on what's going on. So just so you know, too, there's basically three different types of transcobalamin molecules. And we'll illustrate that with two lemons and one small orange. So basically the idea is that only one of the three allow the B12 to get into your cells. There are actually three different types of molecules. There are transcobalamin one, two, and three. And number two is the one that allows your B12 to actually get transported into the cell. So when you have a lot of these transcobalamin molecules being produced, only some of it's going to allow it to get into the cell. And because your body can make all three of them, two of the ones may be basically binding up more of the B12 and only a small fraction is allowed to get into the cell. So again, if you have a elevated B12 binding capacity, it means that there's a lot of these floating around more so than what your B12 levels are. Okay, how'd I do? Did that give you a better understanding of this test for high vitamin B12 levels? Maybe there's a few points that you want clarified or just a different question related to elevated B12 levels. If you do have those questions or need clarification or just want to add a comment, drop it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.